Welcome back to the type system. This is hard stuff, people. I'm proud of you. I'm Daniel, and here we are going to talk about higher kinded types. This is going to be a shorter lesson, but still quite abstract and potentially difficult, so bear with me here. All right, so as before, let's quickly create an app and let me show you what this is about. So right click on the part five type system, new Scala class, and let's call this higher kinded types. Make this an object, of course, and as usual, as before, extends app. So what on earth are higher kinded types? Well, they are in a layman's explanation, a deeper generic type with some unknown type parameter at the deepest level. The actual concept is a little bit more difficult and you'll understand what I mean in a second. But in essence, if I say trait a uh, higher kinded type and then I put in a type parameter which also has type parameters like F underscore, then this is a higher kinded type. So if I hover over this ID hint, it'll say advanced language feature higher kinded type. Now, what are higher kinded types used for? Let me give you an example. So you know by now that we have a lot of things, a lot of monads, which have the flat map method. So if I say, for example, a trait, let's call this my list T. This guy has a flat map method, which takes a type parameter B, for example, and a function from T to B. And uh, this returns a my list B. We also have a whole bunch of other stuff with similar signatures, for example, uh, my option, for example, which returns a my option. We also have futures, we have tries, we have a whole bunch of things that are flat mappable. All the monads have the method called flat map. So if I call this my future and my flat map method returns a my future, then these are all very similar. At the same time, we have similar methods implemented on them. For example, let's consider the case of what we like to call combine or multiply, where we combine two things of the same type, for example, two lists. So if I say list one, two with or times multiply list A and B, we would get all possible combinations of two elements from the two lists. So if we uh, combine these two, we would say list 1a, 1b, 2a, 2b. Combining option would just return a tuple of the two. Combining two futures would, will return a future with a tuple of the two futures and so on and so forth. So the concept of combine is the same between all these flat mappable types. So let's take a stab at this real quick. So if we say a method called multiply, which takes two type parameters A and B because the list may be of different types. And uh, let's say list A, which is a list of A and list B, which is a list B. And uh, this should return a list of tuples. So list of A comma B. Well, we would simply write for so a for comprehension for A in a list A and B in list B, then just yield any combination of the two. So A comma B. So the tuple of A and B. Now, the strange thing is, or the funny thing is, that we can simply copy this around and apply this to options as well. So if I simply replace the type from list to option, or from the type in the, in the third example to future, the implementation is exactly the same. It's identical. Of course, I would need to import the class from Scala Concurrent. But the multiply here is, is exactly the same. Now, because we are advanced Scala programmers, we would like to create a common API with a common implementation for all these types for list, option, and future, and possibly many others, even though list, option, and future are completely unrelated. They're actually different concepts. So how do you think of that? Well, the answer is to use a higher kind of type. So I'm just gonna call this casually a monad and I'm going to put in a higher kind of type inside 
So F underscore is either list or future or option or whatever you have. And uh, the type parameter that this thing here, this monad contains. Now, as we know from the monads lecture, the fundamental operation of monad is a flat map. So we can define a flat map for a type B and a function from A to F of B. And this will return an FB. Now, how would you use such a thing? Well, for example, I can create a class, let's say monad list, which extends monad with and the f underscore here is the actual list type by itself and let's put in a concrete type parameter for example int so basically this is an abstraction over a list of ints and uh, if i override flat map notice what the suggestion of the compiler is going to be so override flat map with a type parameter b which takes an f from int which is our type parameter a to list of b so the compiler has detected that list is a type which also takes type parameters. So it will return a list B here as a result. And of course, if you wanted to use it by hand, you would, you could say val monad list equals new monad list, right? Because you can instantiate a class and you can simply say monad list dot flat map and you can pass in for every X, you could instantiate list from uh, X and X plus one for example, and uh, this would return a list of int. So notice that from a monad list int from this guy, we return a list of int. So from monad list and int, we return by flat mapping a list int. All right, so now that we're here and uh, we have flat map available, we're going to supply an implementation very shortly because we're going to do some modifications. But let's also add a map method signature inside. So we, um, we should define a map which takes a type parameter B and an F which transforms an A to a B and the end result is going to be an FB. So basically if I say um, monad list dot map and uh, I just pass in a doubling function, then I should return a list int. Again, a monad list and int will turn into a list of int after mapping as well as flat mapping. Also, let's supply an implementation here of map in monad list as well so that the compiler doesn't complain. For now, the implementations here are going to be question marks, but we're going to supply the implementation shortly. Now, at this point, there's a high probability that things might be blurry in your head. You may be wondering, why on earth are we doing this monad shenanigans over here? Okay, the answer here is that we are aiming to define a multiply method for monads in general, which is why we need map and flat map implemented so that we can write a single multiply implementation that has this little piece of code. And for this little piece of code to work, we need map and flat map. So I can now say that in general, the multiply method looks like this. So multiply takes some type parameters, the type parameters A and B, but before that, it takes the type of the monad which is being passed. So the higher kind of type that we are using here for map and flat map. And here, instead of passing two lists or two options or two futures, we are passing two monad instances. So we are going to say, let's call this MA. This is a monad with F and A and MB, which is a monad of F and B. So we're enforcing this same type being passed. In, uh, in the case of list, for example, we would say multiply with list A and B. And the arguments are here are going to be typed monad list A and monad list B. So F is list, the list type itself. And at the end, we are just going to return a list or an F in general of the tuple AB. And because we already have the map and flat map methods implemented for the monad trait, we can simply write a for comprehension from 
A in the monad A and B in monad B yield the tuple A comma B. So this is a valid implementation for now. So we can later say, for example, multiply with a new monad list and a new monad list. Okay, if we could pass in some values here, that'll be awesome. But the multiply call compiles. So if I recompile this, oh, it says cannot find an implicit execution context because we're using futures. Let's fix that. So import Scala concurrent execution context implicit global. And let's recompile this. So our code compiles, but it's not super useful because we don't have any values. We are not using any lists. We aren't using where, where are, where's the concreteness in here, right? So we can pass in a list, for example, a list int. For our monad list uh, implementation, concretization, right? So we can also implement the map and flat map methods by saying, list map or flat map f and uh, list map f as the implementation. So this is basically a wrapper over a list and the map and flat map implementations just call the map and flat map implementation of the underlying list. So we can simply pass in list one, two, three, for example, and multiply new monad list with list one, two, and a new monad list with A and B. And this would just run fine. So we have a monad list with a list of ints and a monad list with, of course, a list of strings, just to, uh, uh, to be sure. But of course, our monad list is very restrictive because it restricts the type to int. So why don't we generalize it to a general type A which wraps a list of A, and let's just replace all ends with A. So we've genericized monad list, and suddenly our code starts to compile. So we have mul a multiply with a wrapper over a list one, two, and a wrapper over a list of two strings. So if I print this out, what do you think this will do? So multiply will go here. F is the type of list, and we have two wrappers over a list. So we have a list int and a list string here, and we'll get a list of a tuple int string. So we will do a for comprehension for these two monads, which of course will be rewritten to a dot or ma dot flat map, and for every a we'll do a b map. or mb.map. And for every b, we'll return the tuple ab. And the map and flat map for this monad list thing basically calls map and flat map on the underlying list. So this will basically call this guy dot flat map, this guy dot map, which basically reduces to a for comprehension on the underlying list. So basically we wrote a wrapper API over list by using higher kind of types. The advantage here is that we can now reuse the code because if I do, for example, a monad option, which wraps an option of type option A, and this extends monad with the option type, and I'm using option everywhere, and instead of list, I use the option parameter, of course, the implementations here might be completely different, but uh, uh, given that we already have access to the map and flat map uh, methods on option, it would be a shame not to use them. So if I try to print line, for example, multiply with a new monad option with int, for example, and I'll say sum two and a new monad option with string, for example, and I'll put in the sum Scala, then I should be seeing here 
all the combinations between 1, 2 and AB and I should be seeing sum with a tuple between 2 and a skull. So if I run this magically, I'm going to see here list 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B and sum to Scala. So we see how the multiply implementation is only once per all the monad kinds. So we achieved partly what we wanted. We wanted only a single implementation for multiply that could apply for anything that has a map and a flat map. Only that we used a wrapper instead of the actual types. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we can auto convert our little types into their monad wrapper counterparts? Well, I think we can, and here is where I'm going to deliver the final blow. If this wasn't hard enough, then I'm going to make it even harder by making all of these parameters here implicit. And now I'm forcing the compiler to search for implicit wrappers over a list or an option into their monad counterparts. And I can do that by saying implicit class. So basically, our little trait here, monad, acts like a type class over our f higher kinded type. So this is a higher kinded type class. This is hard. And we are making monad list and monad option implicit classes, that is implicit wrappers over a list or option. And given they are implicit wrappers, we can use simple instances of list and option instead of creating the wrappers by hand. So I can delete this all together and say multiply with list one, two and list AB. And uh, just to make this work correctly, I'm going to comment out all the multiply methods that I wrote earlier so that the compiler is now forced to convert list 1, 2 and list a, b into their monad counterparts. And this will also work if I just multiply the option with the other option. And if I run this again, same result. But this is now sweet because if you notice, now multiply applies to both options and lists with the same implementation. So we have achieved our goal. So this is pretty sweet, but also super hard. We've mixed some of our toughest lessons into this implementation. Now, if you don't get this from this first try, please don't worry because this is normal, okay? Feel free to come back here whenever you see fit. This is what it takes to become an advanced functional programmer, but once this has clicked for you, I promise you will be able to handle absolutely anything. I'm Daniel, and I will be waiting for you in the next video.